Um, a very good morning for some, maybe good afternoon or good evening um, from Bangladesh. Assalamu alaikum uh, it's, a, it's a matter of tremendous pleasure, honor and pride uh, on our behalf uh, as we welcome all of you in a very exclusive, very special uh, dialogue and conversation, which is happening uh, on the occasion of celebrating 50 years of independence for Bangladesh. And at the same time where we are uh, launching a new platform, uh, Bangladesh uh, uh, Diaspora Professional Forum, a forum which is designed to uh, engage with uh, Bangladesh in the next phase of journey for the country. Um, as we celebrate 50 years, it's, it's, a, it's a matter of tremendous pride for all of us uh, in celebrating the tremendous achievement Bangladesh has made over the years. Um, uh, Bangladesh journey in many cases is seen as a, a miracle. And uh, I will just share a couple of uh, uh, slides, a couple of numbers to everyone, just to, just to set the context of uh, uh, the tremendous journey that Bangladesh has made. Um, if you look at, if we compare from where we were in 1971 to 2021, um, a GDP moving from 8 billion to 320 billion, um, uh, per capita income, uh, which is now higher than many of our uh, regional uh, sort of neighbors, uh, who, which were, who were much higher than us. So it, we have made tremendous progress um, uh, over the last uh, uh, 50 years. Um, and not just in economic number, life expectancy, a very, very important part in terms of the social, uh, socio-cultural and uh, social dynamics of people uh, uh, move from 47 years to 73 years. Uh, our forex reserves is now $44 billion, uh, which is a, tr a tremendous uh, sort of uh, strength and manifestation of our economic strength. Uh, our poverty rate has we have reduced from 82% to 20%. And it, it was, of course, pre-COVID. Um, uh, fertility rate has come down. Our agri output have moved out, moved up from one ton per hectare to five ton per hectare. And in the last, um, if you look into the last uh, Bangladesh performance in the last uh, during COVID, uh, we were uh, um, the fastest growing economy in Asia and one of the fastest in the world. All of these basically shows um, uh, the collective uh, effort of all the people of Bangladesh, uh, not just in Bangladesh, but also uh, who have been working uh, all over the world. Uh, into, into creating this amazing journey. Now, this journey also set the context for what should be our next 50 years journey. And that's where I think it becomes very exciting, but also at the same time, extremely challenging. As we sit here today, uh, we know that uh, the next phase of journey would be very different from the journey that we have given so far. Uh, we are in a very different type of world, a world which is driven by technology, uh, living in the age of fourth tire. But at the same time, pandemic has made us realize that uh, simply grow, Growing an economy is not the answer. It must be an equitable, sustainable growth. Uh, we must be inclusive. Uh, we must make sure that our progress is shared much uh, uh, wider within the population. And these are very complex and challenging answer that Bangladesh needs to, needs to provide. And today we will be discussing with four very esteemed uh, guests with us um, uh, who will be discussing their perspective on nation branding, Bangladesh image, uh, where they feel there is a gap exists how can we sort of work around that? And at the same time, how can we engage our global diaspora in that, uh, in that journey? So we have today uh, with us uh, um, uh, His Excellency, Mr. AFM Gosal Azam Sharkar, Ambassador, Embassy of the People's Republic of Bangladesh, Iran. Uh, we have uh, His Excellency MD Shami Mahsan, Ambassador, uh, Embassy of the People's Republic of Bangladesh in Italy. Uh, we have uh, uh, Her Excellency, uh, Ms. Saida Muna Tasneem, High Commissioner, High Commission of People's Republic of Bangladesh, UK, Ireland, and Liberia. And we have Mr. Gulam Moshi, former ambassador, Embassy of the People's Republic of Bangladesh, Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Um, um, uh, very welcome, Excellencies, to this uh, 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 special dialogue. Um, uh, really honored to have all of you here in this, in this dialogue. Um, uh, what I'll do, I'll, I'll start with uh, 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 our uh, Mr. Gulam Moshi, our Ex-ambassador from Saudi Arabia, um, sir, you have been working um, uh, in the in the uh, diplomatic space for a long time and have got a, a fast and experience of how uh, the gap between perception and reality, how perception of a nation impacts economic uh, uh, relation, um, um, uh, business relation, trade and investment, and almost all type of relation that we see globally. Now, how would you see the in the last 10 to 15 years, Bangladesh 
uh, uh, sort of brand's journey, Bangladesh brand's strength or the narrative evolved over the last 10 to 15 years. What shift have you seen? What, what is the, how the narrative has evolved in your opinion? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, this is a month of December, the victory uh, month. So I recall with uh, deep gratitude, our father of the nation, Bangamundu Sheikh Mujib Rahman, and the sacrifice of 3 million Bangladeshi who uh, lost their life and 200,000 female freedom fighters. So uh, this is very important nowadays, what you have mentioned about branding. Each country is now trying to place uh, to uh, the platform, the, the in the platform on, in the in their uh, various branding, I should say. Actually, in the last fifteen years, uh, definitely uh, we have uh, could establish uh, in, in some uh, sector about this branding. But I think th this is not enough. We have to do much more, we have to see what other countries are do, uh, doing. Because you see, the most important thing is this. First of all, we all must uh, uh, be 100% committed that this is what we do. Actually, Bangladesh has uh, got a uh, tremendous, I should say, uh, areas which we can brand internationally. I just give you small, uh, just few examples from my experience. When I was in Saudi Arabia, the Saudi businessman used to come to my office and ask for whether they can buy Walton goods. So Walton has placed themselves internationally as a very good brand. I was also looking after Djibouti. It's a small country in Africa, but Pran has established themselves very well. So, you know, they don't know about Bangladesh, many of the people, but when they say, somebody asks them, where is Bangladesh? They say, they were the juice from plant juice is, uh, is made. So you see, uh, there is all, already the private sector is trying their best to uh, have, but that, that's not enough. We have many other opportunities and many other. I have come across, uh, there is a program of economic relation division where we you know the diaspora can come and visit and share their experience in some specific and unique areas where we are well known and could be in a very good uh, advantages, I should say, position. I'll give you a few examples. For example, in Sudan, the best tailoring shop is Sultan. He's actually a young man from Tangail. But that shop, even the president went to his shop to make his suits. So, he, you know, but what we need is that, though it's, a, it's a just a tailoring shop, but after all, he put place his shop in a such a way that the president comes to his tailoring shop to make his dress, you know. So something, uh, we have this, but what we have to do is that we must have a, some sort of policy and this must be not only private sector, the government has to sponsor this. We have seen in the, especially uh, the, uh, this is very well, uh, I should say, placed or done by the uh, country India. I've seen them, you know, that diaspora, whenever a famous person comes up or a famous uh, goods is there, the whole government and behind the embassies is, is you know, they have the support of the embassies. And, and to be honest with you, the Bangladesh embassies everywhere, uh, from my experience, we are always ready to support and encourage them. But it should be also encouraged equally back at home. It's very important. I know a, a gentleman, uh, Dr. Kobiras, he, he is a one of the authority in the world for neuro electron. You know, this is something subject. He has retired 20 years back, but the, His Majesty the King wanted him to be continue as a, as a researcher in the hospital, uh, Prince Sultan Medical Hospital in Riyadh. So I requested him that, sir, why don't you visit Bangladesh? And because he's well known in the world to share some of his experience. And he's an excellent person to be brand internationally our country that this is a, something, uh, a very uh, famous person. But you know, when I've sent him in Bangladesh, I've invited him and he made some lectures. Some, but you know, the, the response, what was uh, uh, he got from Bangladesh is not really encouraging. So it should be, you know, you, we all should try that. There are many uh, uh, people or the companies uh, in abroad where the diaspora can, you know, brand our country. 
but we they should get uh, also some sort of support or patronage from the country as well this is very important uh, and but when when he came here you know he made some lectures in our various university but you know the response was uh, not so welcoming or not so encouraging so we have to you know very serious that this is very important but when you see our neighboring country india even in one equation you know the the, the saudi foreign minister um, i myself the saudi foreign minister and our uh, former honorable for, uh, foreign minister was uh, having a meeting and he asked for a, that uh, can you uh, suggest a name of a restaurant a bangladeshi restaurant where i can take my family for lunch or dinner and i have to keep mom you know so the our foreign minister asked me that uh, ambassador why don't you speak up i just keep mom but later on you know the for the so the foreign minister he understood that something is you know so when he came and uh, uh, honorable foreign minister mahmudul asked me that why you, you didn't uh, mention it i said sir there is not a single Bangladeshi restaurant in Saudi Arabia where the Saudi for per person like a Saudi foreign minister can go with his family to have a lunch or dinner you know but you know when you go to the UK it's a totally different even the prime minister goes and visit you know Bangladeshi restaurant so you know we have to encourage this sort of you know uh, 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 entrepreneurs in uh, the, to come and uh, promote our you know uh, whether it is food whether it is dress whether it is industrial product and it should be done you know the government should be behind it and i am sure all the embassies are we are very serious and we can do it same thing you know uh, uh, this uh, so the head of the nuclear uh, 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 energy division he was telling me that do you know the 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 out of 10 famous engineers nuclear engineer three were from bangladesh i said no sir i didn't know well they were canadians but all three were from bangladesh one of the, one of them he was from madaripur he mentioned very clearly it's from madaripur and that gentleman was project manager of nuclear power plant the first nuclear power plant in romania first nuclear power plant in argentina and the first nuclear plant the project manager of if north south korea was also from bangladesh but we are not uh, you know so actually we should find this uh, sort of you know uh, experts and uh, famous people and we should uh, place uh, to represent our country so you know so uh, there are many people scattered around we have to just you know locate right. promote and place to brand bangladesh that's Absolutely. all i think I think, I think that's a, that's a, you, you give some very interesting insights and uh, specific examples uh, of how do we sort of leverage the powerful stories which are already there but i think we are not actually cool about bringing those stories together both globally and also in bangladesh and both way there is there is a huge opportunity of how do we tap into that i think that's a, that's a very uh, powerful and i agree with you so um, uh, on this point completely uh, I'll, i'll come to uh, uh, our excellency uh, 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 from um, uh, italy uh, mr shamim uh, for i know that you have been um, um, excellency you are very passionate of nation branding uh, we have been working on branding and and so we bring out publications uh, and every time this is this is i must share I, i don't know whether all of you are aware so we bring out a publication every month and he basically wherever whenever he is out of the country for any of the responsibility country responsibility whenever he is in town he will come and collect all the last publications will take them back and read each of them so one of the most <laughs> i would say passionate reader that we have of our publication um um, um excellency what do you think of because there is one part which we uh, get from uh, uh, mr moses uh, perspective is we are not able to leverage of the strength um, advantage and the story which is already there so one part is outside the country the other part is inside the country in in both context now because you look you study the nation branding as a concept as theory uh, deeply uh, uh, do you feel uh, because we did not drive this storytelling from center uh, 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 that has actually impacted and we let the stories evolve as they are do you think that has impacted bangladesh narrative globally oh. thank you very much uh, 
distinguished uh, participants, uh, your excellencies, assalamu alaikum, uh, good afternoon, and bona uh, sera from Italy. At the outset, I sincerely thank uh, Bangladesh Brand for Forum in the name of Mr. Uh, Sharif al Islam, Sharif, uh, the founder of Bangladesh Brand Forum, for kindly inviting me. And uh, I, I'm, 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 I'm very happy that today we are talking about an issue which is close to my heart. So before I go to the main issue we have raised, uh, uh, this is the month of our glorious victory. I, at the outset, I pay deep homage uh, to the father of the nation, uh, Bangabandhi Sheikh Mujibur Rahman. I pay deep respect to all uh, martyrs and all freedom fighters. So coming to your person, I think uh, you have raised a very pertinent question. And it's a fact that we, we like it or not, we live in a, uh, in a branded world. And, and I think that brings us uh, today uh, here to think about the issue and find out. I think uh, today's discussion uh, will, lead, uh, will generate some ideas and thoughts which will be helpful, but even also for the policymakers to revisit the issue. So coming to your uh, question, if I uh, uh, got it correctly, I think it's not the center. Of course, the headquarters has a very specific role to guide the missions or other entities like missions, foreign missions. But I think, of course, uh, headquarters have a very uh, key role in this regard. But at the same time, I think uh, the missions have its own role and it is very important when you talk about country branding. Uh, it's, it's something which encompasses uh, many things. So it should, it should uh, engage not only the public sectors, it should engage all the stakeholders, be it at the home country or in the foreign land. So obviously, uh, it is expected that um, the center, if I understood your person correctly, uh, has a very, uh, had the lead role. And of course, um, uh, we can always, uh, uh, we can always um, uh, be innovative so that uh, we can, um, I mean, meet our targets, in respect of country branding. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much. Um, um, in your opinion, let's say, uh, because you have been, you were uh, based out of uh, Italy, uh, you were sort of, so Europe is a very important uh, sort of partner for Bangladesh, uh, EU as a whole, but also uh, Italy, Italy as, as a country. Um, from your lens, where do you see um, um, a stronger, or powerful brand Bangladesh, Bangladesh brand can pave the way for our future trade and uh, sort of the innovation because Bangladesh wants to be an innovative country. In that lens, where do you see the opportunity lies, which can be which can be tapped into from a Italy lens or something that you feel you want you would like to tap? Oh, thank you. Uh, just to let me share with you that currently we have. A Italy and Bangladesh enjoy very cordial relations. And apart from the political aspect, if we talk about the economic and trading relations which we have with Italy, that is quite significant. Currently, we have over 2.2 billion US dollar to a trade, but I think there are huge potentials to further expand it. And I think uh, the issue of perception comes. Uh, uh, Italy is the home to second largest diaspora uh, in Europe after only after the UK. We have, I think, uh, around 200,000 Bangladesh nationals. That's a very important uh, issue when we talk about branding. And most of the uh, our workers are uh, semi-skilled or unskilled, and we have very few professionals. So we, um, that is one primary issue which defines the perception 
uh, what kind of uh, people we are sending. Of course, this is very important. When um, the local people uh, try to uh, perceive uh, uh, about a country, and when they see that the, most of the uh, expatriate community are um, they're not professionals, they're not skilled or uh, white color people. Obviously, it has an impression about the sending country. So that is there, keeping that in mind. Now the question is how we can change the narrative or how we can change the perception. And we think Italy is globally known and very famous for its lead role in the field of fashion and design. And there has been success story. Just to mention one, I think our uh, very uh, successful uh, private uh, sector uh, in the FX footwear, they entered into some kind of uh, bilateral um, sort of uh, production with one Italian entity. And that was a success story. And, and these are the way, I mean, joint venture. And of course, we are working currently uh, to bring the Italian uh, companies who are showing keen interest to invest in Bangladesh, in helping Bangladesh and, um, in, in, the, in, in the design and fashion sector, which will eventually uh, economize the cost. So if we can effectively collaborate with Italy, we can benefit. And uh, at the end of the day, uh, when we come, and the, the, the products will be exported in Italy. Just I'm bringing one small issue, which may, which, which, which may, which had, which may have an implication on, uh, on, on, on perception. If we jointly um, produce or manufacture, and if we go for this kind of joint partnership in a big way with the support of the Italy, uh, that, is, that could be one of the areas to change perception. And of course, there are other areas uh, where we can collaborate. Thank you. Uh, uh, thank you so much. I think you've shared some uh, very uh, interesting uh, perspective, which I'll come back again later. Uh, now I'll, 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 I'll come to uh, uh, Excellency from UK. Um, uh, Excellency, uh, I know that you've been very active and you're very passionate. I mean, there are many conversations I remember um, we have with you when you were even in the external publicity and you're very passionate on this space. Uh, and also in UK, you have been also driving um, um, uh, extensive engagement to promote Bangladesh story, the Bangladesh brand. So can you just um, uh, folk, uh, uh, share your perspective of one, um, uh, what are the things that you have done in recent times and what impact you have seen and what are your plans for the future? So if you can share briefly on that, please. Thank you, uh, Cherry. First of all, I want to thank Brand Forum for organizing this. And of course, it's just so wonderful to see my distinguished colleagues, uh, Ambassador Moshi, uh, uh, a very respected colleague who had served, ha had a very successful tenure in uh, Saudi Arabia. And then uh, Ambassador uh, Gausel Azam, who um, is a senior uh, colleague from Ministry of Foreign Affairs, and uh, Ambassador Shami Masan from Italy. Uh, really wonderful to uh, you know join all of you, um, Sharif. Uh, thank you very much for that question. As you know, that you know United Kingdom still is a big name in South Asia, in terms of subcontinental geopolitical influence. It still is looked uh, as if the center of the world, particularly for South Asian nations. And from that perspective, if you walk in the you know streets of London, you actually see more South Asian faces than white faces, and in particular areas. So therefore, you know. Um, Last, um, we consider that, you know, uh, from Bangladesh High Commission, we considered that we should majorly engage in trying to create an identity and brand of Bangladesh um, over the past four or five years. As you know, that what came to our favor, what we had in hand, a weapon, is that a growth of decade and uh, sort of a decade of growth and prosperity, which our Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina, who's a visionary leader, has boldly led. And she has really, really as you know, given Bangladesh an ascent, uh, a rise to an 8.2% growth in 2019, if you recall. So over the past four or five years, we had to deal with a post-Brexit government. Since 2016 Brexit referendum in the UK, 
it has been quite unstable. And, uh, you know, you have to deal with this new conservative, uh, neoconservative and new labor. So uh, new conservative, which is your skeptic and looking for a post-Brexit global Britain policy. So it's a very tough new policy uh, where, you know, um, uh, Britain is looking into global, new global uh, sort of value chains and supply chains. And these all have happened during COVID. So um, the Brexit Treaty actually came into effect during COVID. Uh, so 2019, 2018, 2019, 2020, COVID and post-COVID. So in this period, if we look, if we look at um, what we have done pre-COVID, we have tried to brand Bangladesh with its growth and prosperity credentials, which is the strongest credentials that we, uh, you know, Bangladesh had been enjoying uh, under Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina's leadership. And therefore, uh, you know, whenever, if you look at, uh, Prime Minister Boris Johnson's 50th anniversary message, uh, and he did give three messages by now. Uh, first was the Mujibir, second is the uh, uh, you know Golden Jubilee, and now on 16th of December he's given a new message for Victory Day, Victory 50, and there also he said Joy Bangla. So the thing is that what we invested in is first of all to really really showcase and brag about our um, you know prosperity and growth branding. And prosperity means inclusive societies. We really focused on our growth story and our social inclusion story. And that really, really worked. Now it is resonating. Uh, whenever Prime Minister Boris Johnson is giving his message, any politician, our Honorable Prime Minister was here for COP26 and um, the investment summit, the British trade minister, she also paid tributes to Bangabandhu, uh, saying that he laid the foundation. So did Prime Minister, Shik, uh, Prime Minister um, Boris Johnson. But everybody in their message is saying, that Bangladesh is one of the fastest growing economies of the world. I think that's a great branding for Bangladesh already. We have created that brand in UK for Bangladesh. Uh, this is number one. Number two is we really, you know, you need to have some iconic and landmark year, uh, sort of, you know, years to celebrate. Like in 2016 was our tourism year, beautiful Bangladesh, if you recall. But um, here we had, we were really looking forward in 2019 of course, 2019, we really did cricket branding. So we had our national cricket team in World Cup cricket. And cricket is a great way of branding sports. Uh, and of course, there's culture branding. But sports really, really resonated well in UK. And, uh, you know, we had a parliamentary cricket team as well. And our parliamentary cricket teams played with UK parliamentary cricket teams. And I remember our Honourable Prime Minister was very pleased that even the Bangladesh cricket, national cricket team didn't make it. Um, you know, to the semifinals, the Bangladesh parliamentary cricket team did make it to the semifinals. So um, cricket branding was 2019 and a growth and prosperity branding. And then suddenly COVID happened during the Mujib year. And despite all that, what we really, really focused was giving it a Mujib branding. Therefore, you know, the new conservatives, the new Labour, this new generation of British politicians, they actually have no familiarity with Bangladesh's 1971 story or the Sheikh Mujibur Rahman story. So we really, really utilized the Mujib year in creating, recreating, or sort of refreshing the memory of what happened in 1971. Why was like, you know, after India, United Kingdom was the second country where we raised our flag and we opened our high commission uh, uh, before the war actually ended. So why did Prime Minister, uh, Conservative Prime Minister Edward, he'd received Bangabundu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman from the Pakistan prison as the president of Bangladesh and addressed it as Mr. President, and why Bangundu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman received a hero's welcome in the UK. We revived all those emotions, those value-based relationship between the two countries. And now the new conservatives actually believe in it. So they believe that Sheikh Mujibur Rahman's number 10 visit and 8 January visit, and we'll be celebrating it coming January as well, commemorating it, was actually laid the foundation for a value-based relationship between these two countries, which is based on secular values. You know, secularism, democracy, and all these progressive and liberal values. So we have been, been able to do a Mujib branding, taking advantage of the Mujib year. And then came the Golden Jubilee. We also did some Golden Jubilee you know, branding exercise where, uh, again, Prime Minister Boris Johnson, Prince Charles, they all gave message. Queen gave a message. We sought message from all three. And everyone remembered this nation from Bangladesh in 1971. They supported Bangladesh. They provided uh, you know, diplomatic and other humanitarian support. And now here's this country, which is one of the fastest growing economies in the world. There's a great story of social inclusion, of poverty eradication, of women empowerment, and the whole package, we've been able to sell them very well. Um, so in terms of image, uh, you know, Golden Jubilee is also an opportunity where we actually revive the community. And, you know, I, I was listening to Ambassador Moshi where, you know, of course, he has the challenge of dealing with large number of um, you know, migrant labor community from Bangladesh. 
Uh, <clears throat> Shamim also has a challenge of, uh, you know, expatriate Bangladeshi community, uh, you know, undocumented, documented. Here in the UK, the story is different. Here's we have we currently have like about 700,000 plus diaspora community, and it's a very strong diaspora. It's the fourth largest remittance sending country, and this is not um, a sort of migrant uh, sending, uh, you know, receive uh, receiving country. Th these are all emigrants. They've emigrated here. They're all dual nationals, so it's a huge difference. And um, you know, they're established community. Uh, the backbone is the curry industry, and they already have a branding. Uh, and then how they're contributing. So during these last three, four, five years, uh, because of our growth and prosperity, the community actually is taking pride. The diaspora takes pride in Bangladesh. So they have this pride and esteem that they have developed during the 50th anniversary. And what we have seen, if you've noticed that during the 50th anniversary, 26 March, London, I was lit. And, you know, this was lit by a diaspora counselor, a, a group of uh, professionals who, uh, you know, uh, approached the High Commission, what we'd like to do, we said, why don't you like the London Eye? And they took the initiative to do that. We were just silent partners, you know, like we 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 appreciated the uh, effort. And then if you if you notice that um, uh, uh, last 16th of December at Victory 50, the London, the Tower Bridge was lit in red and green. Uh, we will be doing two more programs. We did one with British Library. The, the other one was British Museum. You know, these are global iconic institutions. And British Library, British uh, Museum, the British National Museum will be lit in uh, red and green again coming March. So here are the mainstream British institutions, uh, which we are lighting. And the diaspora in every of these, uh, you know, uh, of these branding exercise of our Golden Jubilee, the principal party here are diaspora members. So we have a very mature diaspora here who are itself a brand for Bangladesh. If you notice Prime Minister Boris Johnson's 50th anniversary message, Prince Charles's message, any minister's message, they will praise the Bangladesh British diaspora like anything, particularly then I'm coming to a post-COVID branding. During COVID, we, again, we you know, um, reaffirmed our um, credentials that you know, we are the, uh, you know, the highest growth country 5.2% in 2020. We continued our growth. We continued our COVID resilience with one of the lowest, you know, COVID prevalence uh, in, in, in and morbidities in South Asia. And there again, we again reasserted back from Bangladesh our credentials as a resilient country. Uh, we absorbed the shocks. And again, here in the UK, diaspora was praised for the special role they played in two aspects. One is our doctors and nurses and you know caregivers. They they are like the NHS heroes. And the other sector is the, uh, um, you know, the charity. So, you know, uh, let's say Channel S, and we also have a very good Bangla media here. And that's a great way of branding Bangladesh and they're continuing branding Bangladesh. Uh, they also raised huge amounts of money for the national health services, NHS here in the UK. Uh, we have Dobiruddin Chacha, who's like 101 years old, who did walking for every day and raised like, I don't know, uh, 500,000, half a million pounds for NHS and COVID victims uh, in 54 countries. So these, this is how Bangladesh was branded. And the High Commission, uh, I would, when it comes to trade investment, I would say that, you know, the first, we did the initiative, and I continue to say that, if you ask me that, what should be the next NRBs or, you know, uh, diaspora engagement? One thing is that, uh, uh, of course, uh, uh, the um, first Bangla Taka bond was uh, uh, listed at the London Stock Exchange. And this was in 2019, when we did an investment summit, uh, and the uh, you know, Pran is the company that IFC had uh, listed this bond. But, you know, uh, just last November, when Honorable Prime Minister was here, we did the Bangladesh Investment Summit with Security Exchange Commission and BIDA. And the main theme was capital market investment. And again, I've been encouraging the Taka Stock Exchange and the SEC to find companies to again list green bonds or multi climate bonds in the London Stock Exchange and similarly work out an NRB bonds, green bonds, for green uh, products and services and you know anything that reduces carbon footprint is the name of the game right now. And uh, you know in Bangladesh, stock exchange also to create this kind of bonds for NRBs in particular, uh, the diaspora. Uh, so these are, you know, this is how we have uh, branded uh, Bangladesh. Uh, and of course, you know, uh, women empowerment, um, secular country. Again, we have really, really established and branded ourselves as a secular country. Um, and the values of 1971, and we convince them, we have done our best to convince them that, look, if you, what kind of Bangladesh you want in the next 20 years, obviously not, uh, 
you know, something which is similar to Islamic Republic of Pakistan in the sense that, you know, we are a country in 1971. We, we gave this narrative that in 1971, we actually came away from an Islamic Republic and we emerged as a secular, um, you know, first people's republic in, in, in South Asia. And who led that? Uh, Bangladesh Sheikh Mujibur Rahman. Now, it, it was very important to revive that branding and to convince them and continue to tell this story that you need to continue this branding. We cannot shirk or digress from this secular identity and you need to support us. So this was how, you know, the kind of things that we did. And of course, uh, we did many, many events. Uh, you know, uh, we got Amartya Shen from uh, Harvard University to give a talk on Bangabundu and Visions in Bangladesh in the Mujibir. I think that was a great, great branding on Bangladesh. And the three things that I requested Amartya Shen to focus on or to speak on, one is what is Bengali uh, nationalism, you know, Bengali cultural nationalism? What is Bangabundu's secular, secularism? What does, it, what does it mean, inclusion? And the third is how relevant it is for today's uh, Bangladesh and South Asia. So, you know, that also was a, a, a great branding with the academic circles here in the UK. Um, so, yeah, I think um, these are the way we brand it and culture branding. Uh, as you know, that this is, I think, uh, uh, Ambassador Moshi was mentioning that, you know, we don't have a national PR or branding uh, strategy, which definitely the Ministry of Foreign Affairs uh, uh, under the leadership of Honorable Foreign Minister Dr. Abdul Momin is really trying to do that. And, uh, you know, uh, we are also given little budgets to do uh, one or two programs or every program that we want to do. Uh, however, you know, what we don't have, if I come to the challenges, what we don't have is we don't have a Nehru Center. We don't have an Indian Cultural Council uh, in London. We don't have Bharatiya Bidda Bhavan. Now, we lack these institutions for the culture branding. But, you know, actually, if you just, uh, somebody was mentioning India. If you look at India, India actually did its culture branding and it showcased its riches. You know, it showed that it's, it's, it's not a poor country. It's a rich country, but through its culture. It could be through Mumbai film industry or anything. So culture branding is extremely important. And we know back in Bangladesh, we have a great, great, we are culture nation. If you say what's going to be the future branding of Bangladesh, it should be culture nation. And, you know, we are a very cultural nation, but we are not being able to, uh, you know, um, have that kind of an institutional platform where we can actually gear all our you know, resources to really, really do a big culture branding. For example, I strongly recommend that there should be a, Bangabundu Culture Center or Bangabundu Center in the UK, where Bangabundu was the first place where Bangabundu put his, you know, footprints. So um, coming back, you know, culture branding is extremely important. And of course, diaspora branding is also very important. Brand your diaspora. Indians are branding their diaspora, rather diaspora is branding India. So it's a complementary exercise. So we need to get into the complementary exercise and which we are trying to do. And, you know, there are many celebrity uh, diaspora here, uh, but we are not utilizing them. Uh, the celebrity diaspora. So we have the curry industry. That's a celebrated, you know, huge, huge curry awards where British prime minister comes, you know, foreign minister come and many MPs come. So that kind of branding where uh, Bangladesh is being branded, but it really doesn't have much to do with the country. Last thing that I would mention that we felt diaspora needs recognition. You know that uh, the diaspora here played a very important role in 1971. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, uh, it's called the Trafalgar Square demonstrations, uh, recognize Bangladesh, stop genocide, release Bangabundu. And they need different kinds of recognition. Curry industry needs that. And I, I'm sure all the other ambassadors would agree that everybody needs recognition. So it's a very important part that we must give some recognition to our diaspora. And, you know, whatever is the niche advantage or comparative, you know, lead sector where Bangladesh is getting branded. For example, over here is the car industry, it's the NHS, our doctors. Then our councillors, we have 120 elected councillors from uh, Labour Party and Conservative Party, and we have our members of parliament who are elected here. So we have four members of parliament and one House of Lord member, but uh, through them, uh, how to brand Bangladesh, how to connect them, how to take back Bangladesh. And young generation, you know, British Bangladeshi students that High Commission gives uh, an award, British Bangladeshi Education Award. But we also want to take them to Bangladesh. You know, we need to have a program visit Bangladesh or love Bangladesh kind of a program. Thank you very much. I'll stop there. Sorry for taking time. No, um, I think there are some really exciting uh, sort of things you have been doing. Uh, and, and, and I think many of those were visible and we could see from Bangladesh. And these, were, these makes us really proud that when Bangladesh is celebrated in a big way. I'll now go, uh, come to uh, Ambassador uh, um, um, uh, Gosal Azam. Uh, Excellency, um, uh, we will now move uh, more towards into execution. So one of the one big part of our discussion, which I will be focusing more now, 
in terms of what can we do. And this is something which we believe we would like to take back. We have already, I've already taken a couple of notes, which uh, uh, I think we'll try to see uh, how can we assist in those journey. Uh, I'm already taking notes from all of you. Um, so I would like to sort of now start to hear two perspectives. First is what you feel should be Bangladesh story as we move forward, number one. And number two, how, what type of collaboration that we can explore? Because on the one hand, we are basically focusing on innovation in a big way. So when we talk about innovation, so there are different uh, 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 innovation-based startup support system could be there. Uh, there can be, uh, or as a platform from our side, how can we how can we assist in the journey uh, uh, globally where Bangladesh uh, High Commissions are there? If you can share your perspective on that, that'll, that'll be really helpful. Uh, thank you, Mr. Shariful Islam, and uh, my dear colleagues who are present on this platform. Uh, we are really having interesting conversation and on a very interesting topic. And uh, I begin uh, uh, surely with uh, by paying uh, homage to our father of the nation, uh, who has uh, led us to freedom and. Uh, uh, we are at uh, the 50th anniversary of the independence and we are taking together uh, some satisfaction of uh, uh, progressing uh, very well and uh, being on track in uh, uh, changing the perception in the global uh, context and uh, uh, advancing uh, in, in, in successfully uh, uh, nation branding in different ways, in different areas and different uh, Fields. Uh, so, uh, well, uh, there are many actors as there are many areas of nation branding. And uh, uh, among actors, uh, I mean, definitely government uh, gets the priority and, and, and has to take the uh, most uh, important responsibility of uh, nation branding. And then there are actors like uh, media and uh, actors like uh, political parties, actors like uh, cultural uh, uh, activists, and uh, also uh, we come to private sector, and uh, that is uh, the subject on which we are focusing. Uh, and uh, that is uh, uh, trade investment and uh, innovation and business. And there uh, we have, uh, I mean, uh, we have to uh, see what uh, we can do branding, I mean, branding of our goods and also branding of our services. So, uh, and there in that context, uh, diaspora is very important. And uh, there, uh, I'd like to come to uh, some specific points, how uh, we can uh, uh, take forward this uh, branding mission, and how uh, particularly private sector, and also the particularly platform like yours, can uh, come to uh, uh, contribute and uh, can take Bangladesh in that journey post 50. So there, uh, definitely innovation is a field which uh, we are looking at uh, seriously because we have the important task of reorienting our, our economy to, uh, towards services. Uh, and uh, we, we have the example of uh, Hong Kong, Singapore, uh, uh, Beirut and then afterwards uh, uh, Dubai and all these places. And there, uh, you know, innovation, technology and uh, combining all the attributes and all positive associations and making all uh, 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 stories, I mean positive stories that they worked for and uh, they have done good progress. So we keeping them in, in mind and uh, keeping our target of uh, the uh, future, near future of uh, fourth industrial revolution and uh, innovation, science, technology, and all these, uh, we have to think of uh, uh, particularly, not only brand making, uh, sorry, brand uh, uh, building, but also brand making. And that can be done through research and development, through collaboration with the countries uh, where from we can uh, have uh, benefits of uh, doing more innovations and uh, also uh, commercializing those in, you know, innovations and uh, uh, taking our products and services uh, to a level, to a quality, 
where, uh, on which we can take pride in. So that is what uh, our objective is. And uh, for that, we need particular uh, things, particular uh, steps to take. Uh, we, have to, to, we have to use our platform, platform like yours, private sector platform and also government platform. And then we have to connect and do networking, networking with uh, the institutions where the research and development are done and, uh, uh, and, and innovations come out. And then also we have to do joint venture as uh, Ambassador uh, Shami Masan has mentioned. And uh, also as uh, Ambassador Munat Asnim has mentioned, uh, we have to use diaspora and the professionals and uh, the di diaspora in, uh, uh, in, in, in particular uh, uh, areas where they can represent and they can project well with quality, like curry, like uh, uh, culturally uh, presenting themselves as uh, great, uh, as proud. So uh, in, in these areas, I mean in platforming, using platform very well, networking, and also uh, collaborating with uh, our partners, we have embassies, embassies in uh, countries uh, where uh, uh, institutions are very strong and developed. Uh, for example, the country which I'm in, Iran, is very strong in uh, uh, science, technology, and innovation. It has made a special drive, and it is now number four in the world in nanotechnology. And uh, if we talk about uh, science, technology, and innovation, I can just give you one example that it has uh, uh, it has a knowledge-based industry that is coming up, rising uh, in a very strong and uh, uh, solid way. And uh, they have already uh, come up with 1,700 uh, knowledge-based product, which many of which have brought uh, new things, which uh, new products, which uh, the world has not uh, yet seen. And uh, if we can... Uh, uh, do collaboration with them, make joint venture and uh, take their innovations and uh, uh, do the incubation in Bangladesh and uh, uh, through joint venture with them, we commercialize the, uh, th those products in Bangladesh. We can bring in certain monopoly products and there we can uh, excel as uh, uh, the uh, first startup. So th these are the opportunities that uh, our embassies and uh, our uh, high commissions can uh, offer. And uh, also at the same time, we have to take the story to the world so that uh, we, 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 can, we can display and we can tell and we can show, showcase, showcase what we have uh, developed, how we are progressing. So these are important things. And also uh, we have to, uh, be in collaboration and in touch with uh, international organizations. I have some uh, experience of working with uh, some organizations like the Commonwealth uh, based in uh, London and uh, YC. Uh, uh, we had a number of meetings and uh, programs and uh, summits and conferences uh, in Jeddah and in uh, other parts of the Muslim world and also T8. So all these organizations have the avenue of, uh, uh, of uh, uh, providing uh, cooperation and support in capacity building, in training, in connecting with uh, 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 quality and uh, uh, world standard institutions and uh, all the support for STI and all those. And also they have the window of uh, uh, providing uh, financing support as well. For example, if we talk about uh, uh, YC, there is ISTV. And I give you one example of uh, 2017, uh, 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 when uh, we had a, a Science, Technology and Innovation Summit, first one uh, in the YC context in Astana. And there, uh, ISDB declared a financing uh, of $500 million. And also they uh, brought together in that context, uh, certain institutions, universities, even from the UK. And uh, they, they had made the arrangements where uh, this kind of cooperation uh, can be pursued. 
So that is there. And the same way, in the same way, we have a D8 platform there. We have also uh, innovation support mechanism. I worked there as, as, I, as Bangladesh commissioner and I did brainstorming there. And also I, I uh, uh, put in the agenda in D8 that uh, these innovations are supported and financing uh, uh, can be uh, given and uh, uh, seed financing and uh, initial financing can be provided uh, uh, to, to, to uh, the institutions and also individuals so uh, to encourage that. So all these platforms could be used, utilized and therefore uh, the platforms like yours uh, can do the networking, can connect uh, our youth, our entrepreneurs, our uh, uh, workers in STI and R&D, and uh, also uh, uh, put them together, do the matching in joint venture. So thank you. Uh, thank you so much, there are, uh, by Ambassador. There are some very uh, uh, important insights you have shared. Uh, I'll now go to Ambassador Moshe. Um, um, uh, as we are looking into the next journey, so uh, uh, and we are trying to sort of connect our diaspora with the next phase of journey for Bangladesh, looking into from knowledge and innovation. In your suggestion, what are the ideas where we can and how can we engage the diaspora with Bangladesh? One part you have already shared, how can we leverage the successful and celebrated diaspora around the world to brand Bangladesh? That's one very good suggestion. But with Bangladesh, in order for Bangladesh to go for the journey of innovation and knowledge-driven economic creation, how can we engage them more with Bangladesh? Thank you once again. Actually, uh, the most important, one very important uh, issue was mentioned by Ambassador Munna that we have some of the very famous and unique, our members of uh, the diaspora, and they need recognition, the proper recognition, which is absent for the last 50 years, I can tell you. There are so many uh, good numbers of, uh, you know, excellent uh, people around the world, Bangladeshi, you know, but only thing it will be important if it will encourage them to contribute more to the motherland if they get some sort of recognition. Recognition doesn't mean monetary. They don't want monetary recognition. They want something at least recognition. At least, uh, you know, just, uh, you know, as everybody wants to be uh, recognized. So this is very important, Ambassador Muna has mentioned. And uh, when I joined uh, the Riyadh in uh, 2015, there was not a single foreign investment from Saudi Arabia to Bangladesh. But this is, I, I should uh, yeah, give credit to our Honorable Prime Minister after I arranged an official visit. The, after six and a half years, it was her first visit. She made, uh, I uh, arranged some investment uh, forum or business forum over there. And uh, she made some very uh, strong impact. And, uh, you know, and followed by another three or four visits. We now have a so the investors, 28 so the investors in queue, which is a total investment of if we really we can utilize, it can reach up to $30 billion. Because Bangladesh is already branded by the embassy and the honorable prime minister. So you know the $30 billion investment it started with even with Aramco the largest company in the world. They, they, they never have thought about coming to Bangladesh before. But after the visit of Prime Minister, they have seen how much serious the Prime Minister is. You know, they, they are here now in Bangladesh. So Bangladesh is already branded. And, you know, our Prime Minister is, is playing a very important role. But I think the other ministries, they should also be equally committed like the Honorable Prime Minister. She, is, she really means business. She is actually serious and tough, you know. And you, I, I can share you, an investor came, it was in Jeddah Chamber of Commerce. It was with the, uh, the big construction company, number one or number two construction, so that they were looking for a partner. And this said that we would like to go to Bangladesh. And the prime minister make immediate decision, okay, go ahead and sign the MOU right in front. 
the gentleman who was supposed to sign, he said, that let me see what is written inside. The Prime Minister told, her, told him, you don't need to see. I'm giving you instructions. Just go ahead and sign. So, you know, she means really business. But, you know, we should be also be equally serious in welcoming those investors, you know. So, this is very important. And, uh, you know, uh, it's already the brand, country is branded in Saudi Arabia as an investment, good place for investment. Now, rest depends upon us how we... Uh, welcome them, how we can make easy for them. Because like, you know, our big diaspora, because I was also in UK in the 80s, there's a big diaspora in UK. And you know, that's the best place. We have so many successful people over there, especially now the young generation. You know, it's unbelievable, but they need a little bit of recognition when they come to select or come across the airport. From there, they, you know, they start getting, you know, the bitter experience. And, you know, and I'm sure Ambassador Muna have to face all these, you know, complaints or, you know. So it is actually this. So actually, you see what is a, it's a commitment by all of us is needed. That, yes, we would like to brand Bangladesh. And we have to be serious. You know, this is number one. And number two, we are not should be happy with our growth of 6 or 7%. Why not we can reach 10% plus? Because this is a country. We have excellent young generations coming up, 4 million people and entering to the labor market every year. So we have to find there enough employment. We have to look after our environment because 30% of our land mass is going underwater because of greenhouse effect. So we have to think about those also. So, you know, <clears throat> so we should uh, be more serious, more, we should do more hard work to get it, you know, uh, to face those challenges. Now, another thing has happened, uh, I give another example, because I go with the example, because I've seen, I came across this, I think this will, like Al Salam Aerospace and Boeing. They have a big uh, facilities in Riyadh. They maintain all the fighter aircrafts, uh, fixed and uh, aircraft. So they, when the Prime Honorable Prime Minister was making a presentation that I would like to have a, some sort of uh, airplane, aircraft maintenance facilities in Nalmunihar. So these people came from the Boeing and they said, Bangladesh, they are dreaming, it's impossible. There's, I convinced the CEO of Al Salam Air Boeing to come and visit Bangladesh. They have seen the BF, the Bangladesh Air Force Maintenance, and he went back. It was actually, they have three signals, the red, orange, and green. It is the so red was for the Bangladesh. No Bangladeshi can work in that facilities. But after he turned back, he put it orange. So they are now encouraging Bangladesh. And he signed an agreement to proceed with this because he was so impressed with our technical people and that, that we are maintaining already the fighter aircrafts in Mars. This is something they never could think of. And they say, why you want to send aircraft to Suryat for maintenance? You can do it. Your people are excellent. So, you know, we have a very young and very dynamic people. We should make them opportunity for them so that, you know, they can have the right platform. That's all. I think uh, you are in a very good uh, position to uh, help this, uh, create this platform. Another thing I just tell you, we, uh, you know, our, our big, uh, book on, on our, uh, our father of the nation, Bhagavad So we, it's also translated in Arabic. So we have given it to Arabic friends. One gentleman is vice president of the Makkah Madina presidency. He said, uh, ambassador, we don't understand the book because it's, uh, we don't know these people. But there are some philosophical thoughts in that book. You should, you know, make more research on the, the philosophy of the Bangabandhu. Because, you know, their names, uh, Tajuddin, you know, they, they don't, they cannot, you know, they don't understand who is those people. But he, he told me that there are some philosophical message in, in, in this book. So you should. So he introduced me to, to the rector of Jeddah University, King Abdul Aziz University, which is a big university. And, you know, this is the first time because there is no Bangla, Bangla literature translated in Arabic till as of today. So I took the initiative. Then they said, we are we are want to collaboration. It will be first, will be literature on Nuzrul for this uh, literature. Because in the Arab world, they're totally unaware. 
aware of this the rich you know of bengali literature so it will be a, a, a first it is nazrul islam and followed by bangabandhu research on bangabandhu so you know we have to take this up to those level and those places and uh, you know and we uh, have connected this uh, university with the ministry of culture and they are connected with the nazrul university in, in uh, trishal mm-hmm. so i hope that this will go on then it will be uh, research on bangabandhu uh, because the arab world they are totally unaware about the rich bangladeshi okay. bengali literature so you know this is very important and thirdly is this we should also encourage the young generation you know uh, for person me my uh, the young generation have more innovative idea more uh, and you should encourage those young generation because they will be you and when you're talking about the next 50 years i will be not be there but this young generation you should invite more young generation and we should hear from them what they are thinking in the next 50 years i have seen because i have seen the one of the best uh, i should say security ict person in saudi arabia he is a bangladeshi young professor in madina university the, the government utilize him for all the security cyber security and you know i have invited him to also to come to bangladesh he was here also he made some presentation the poet so you know we have to encourage those young people to come and join this platform and i'm sure you can be in a very good position to encourage this young people and uh, to be with uh, connect with your uh, platform and uh, make them they, they can make bangladesh you know which we have failed maybe i should say not fail but we couldn't do much what in the last 50 years but they could do the same thing in next 5 years inshallah so i have got a great you know confidence on our young generation and we should encourage them in all sector whether it's economy or innovation it even political leadership there would be much better leadership than ours thank you no ambassador i agree with you fully in fact uh, just just to echo your thoughts i mean there are already a number of uh, very bright young uh, sort of uh, professionals from uk from australia from usa uh, professors who are leading at a very young age uh, it department in uh, uh, big universities are already joining and very passionate about bangladesh so i fully agree with you um i'll i'll, I'll now go to uh, ambassador shami masan i mean uh, echoing from the previous thought uh, the focus on culture i mean uh, culture is uh, very important and bangladesh has one of the one of the richest culture but that story again hasn't been told uh, in uh, italy that is uh, from art lens uh, we have one of the one of the most vibrant platform called venice biennale there are florence biennale uh, from an art lens Uh, what do you think are the opportunities where bangladesh uh, can leverage in those platform because bangladesh is just uh, taking part in such uh, prestigious but cultural platform what do you think uh, we need to uh, uh, sort of do to leverage those platforms on the richness of bangladesh art and culture and the second question which i am actually asking everyone at the same time if you can share very briefly uh, your thoughts on how can we engage uh a diaspora i mean uh professional diaspora in that journey uh, in addition to what we have already discussed uh ambassador shamim uh, thank you very much uh, you have raised a very pertinent question and if we talk about um engaging diaspora uh, for uh, cultural uh, in kai uh, promoting bangladesh branding bangladesh uh, while we uh, cooperate in the field of culture i think uh, as you have rightly mentioned we have a very vibrant community here around 200000s including uh, some undocumented nationals so uh, obviously as you already mentioned that culture could be one of the core elements to connect to create better understanding between communities and this is very as applicable in respect of bangladesh and italy but the point i'm trying to uh, mentioned here that unlike uk uh where because of our colonial past and because the language is english so the understanding between um uh, our uh, between the two people is, is is this is a different context because of the language i think 
and the understanding at the level of the at the, uh, at the the level of common people between Italians and Bangladeshis, uh, there is a huge gap. And I think largely it is because of, because of language. Uh, having said this, we must uh, act uh, proactively so that we take, we, we take some proactive uh, measures so that it helps create greater understanding between two communities. This is very interesting. I think uh, many of us uh, perhaps aware about this, that Father Marino Reagan, a Catholic missionary uh, who is buried in Bangladesh, who has spent larger part of his life in Bangladesh, uh, he, his, his acclaim for translating um, some, um, some literary works of Rabindranath Tagore and Polliko Vijayashimuddin and I think that was a great initiative on the part of a foreign friend like Father Marino. He's also highly respected because of his uh, uh, great contribution during the War of Liberation. He has been uh, awarded a Friend of Bangladesh Award. So being an Italian, I'm coming to the diaspora issue uh, later. Being an Italian, he had the uh, love and affection for Bengali language and culture. And he himself translated many uh, literary works of Tagore and Polliko Vijayashimuddin. And I think that helped, uh, I, 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 I don't know whether I should say in a big way, or at least of course in a small way, to, to familiarize Bengali culture and literature to the wider audience of Italy. This is a very this is a very significant contribution, I must say. Coming back to diaspora, I we have a very vibrant community, but unlike UK or Australia, Canada, or some developed countries, we don't have many professionals who could play uh, a lead role. But of course, we have few professionals and few um, um, some students who are enrolled, their numbers are not insignificant, but not also very big. So what do we think that uh, our faculty members, Bangladeshi faculty members who are working in some universities in Italy and some other uh, institutes, we, we are planning to engage them um, so that they can, along with the students, to showcase our cultural beauty and our heritage. And I think that will help if we, uh, and they are very keen. I had some opportunities to uh, attend talks on Bangladesh in universities. And when I talk to our students and faculty members, um, including the Italian faculty members, I had an impression that they are very keen to know about Bangladesh, the culture of Bangladesh. And I think uh, that is very important. So we have a plan to pursue our public diplomacy try and engage our student community, especially because our workforce, uh, they may not be the workers. They may not be, um, I mean, talking about engaging our desk, I think our student community who are already studying here, our faculty members, they are better placed to help us in this area. And of course, there are numerous community cultural organizations who, who organize large number of uh, cultural activities apart from Pailabesh and other things. And here at the embassy, we try to engage them. And there are other reasons, not only that they showcase our cultural beauty, but also just to make them feel that they can contribute, they can contribute to the programs and activities of the ambition so um, of, of the embassy so they feel connected with the with the country um, and and this is very important many of them are having Italian passports but once you engage them that will uh, that will make them feel that we value them and the issue of recognizing uh, expatriates uh, the diaspora came up in a big way today I think this is one of the ways. And at the official level, 
there was a cultural agreement and under that there was a cultural exchange program we are working currently to renew it and i think that will also uh, contribute uh, in this regard and this is very important to share on uh, this platform that uh, when honorable prime minister sheikh hasina uh, visited italy last i think it was february 2000 20 there was an agreement between the two heads of governments that uh, both countries will be drawing series of cultural and other programs there was an there was a, a specific mention of cultural uh, programs to draw cultural programs along with other activities to mark a 50th anniversary of the establishment of diplomatic relations is uh, we're going to uh, celebrate it from february Uh, because Italy recognized us on 12 February. So I think we are planning some kind of year-long activities. So once, uh, uh, so in line with the understanding, I think that that gives a platform also to exchange uh, cultural teams and programs and engage, right to your point, our diaspora in a big way. And that would also um, um, pave the way for um visiting the i mean uh, the italian artist visiting bangladesh on the part of the italian uh, on the part of italy this is uh, which we hardly see because there should be two way uh, traffic movement and the public perception is that as i did mention at the beginning that bangladesh is a migrant sending country and uh, the fact is that we sent mostly unskilled uh, workers or poor because of their uh, hard work and determination many of them over a period of time i can they graduate themselves to the level of semi skilled uh, sort of so that is there it's not very common but they are doing very well so i think um, this is an important area which can uh, effectively play a role i mean culture uh, cultural uh, element which can effectively play a role to shape the perception of the country i mean here bangladesh thank you uh, th- th- thank you so much uh, ambassador shamim uh, 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 now basically we have been uh, i think there are uh, as i mentioned we are re- recording this so we are taking notes from each of you there is some very very important uh, insights you are providing and i can i can from our side we can we can sort of uh we can we, we can make the um um uh, commitment that we will uh in our journey we will try to do everything to assist the uh, journey that we are doing so finally i will be a last very brief question that i'll be reaching out to all of you uh, um uh, that um uh, how can we assist uh in the journey and and the, uh, very passionately the uh, bangladesh branding journey or engaging the diaspora journey or engaging uh, different bodies for bangladesh which is again linked back to branding the country how from as a platform so we have because we work with extensive all the private sector uh, all the innovation platforms in bangladesh uh, and now that we have the uh, professional diaspora forum across the across different countries how can we bring all of this together and basically assist uh in 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 the uh, in the vision that you have from each of the each of the high commissioner embassy so i'll start with uh, ambassador muna from uk uh, if you can share very briefly i'll go to everyone with the same question thank you so <clears throat> sharif you are asking that how can bangladesh brand forum engage with us or how, what kind yes. of role can you play and how can we assist in your engagements that you are planning for the next coming years uh, both uh, involving the diaspora and bangladesh a uh, business community back here so you know um one thing that i didn't reflect and of course uk is bangladesh's third largest trading partner uh third largest export destination and second largest uh, investor in in terms of cumulative cumulative investment <clears throat> so the country you know our two countries all together have a 10 billion uh financial transactional portfolio uh, including remittances uh and there you know number one product that comes to this country 95% is ready made garment and definitely we would like uh, you know uh, to engage bgme a much more extensively which actually they don't i've been trying to encourage them uh, to create bgme's own uh, program here in the uk to brand 
our ready-made garments because, you know, there's no denying that uh, Bangladesh, if not second, currently it's the third largest ready-made garment exporting country. Number one is United States. Number two is Germany. Number three is UK. And, uh, you know, uh, if you note that uh, we don't get reprimanded and negative media uh, in that much in the United States or Germany, but we always get it in the United Kingdom. Uh, that's like the hub of negative publicity of Bangladesh. So, um, you know, we are still a lot of, uh, you know, academia, um, people of, you know, sort of uh, eth eth ethical branding, uh, um, you know, institutions, they're still stuck with uh, this uh, Rana Plaza. So we must w utilize the private sector. That means BGME and the chamber. So this year, the investment summit, you know, we made sure that Federation FBCCI signs a, a cooperation MOU or becomes a member of the Confederation of British Industry here, CBI, which is more or less its counterpart in the British Chamber, which there was no connectivity. So we must utilize chambers and private sector uh, associations uh, to create the connectivity. Without this connectivity, we cannot brand Bangladesh. And when the private sector connects with the chambers, they automatically organize. And then the British Bangladesh Joint Chambers, British Bangladesh Chamber of uh, B BBCCI, uh, we need to engage them. And one thing that they keep on asking for is recognition. And I'll go back to that. Uh, there are two kinds of recognition they want. One is, you know, they want a recognition of their, if, you know, we have NRB Bank, you will find that many of the directors are from UK, uh, British uh, Bangladeshi business people. Uh, so, you know, they are now in the banking sector. They are in the renewable energy sector. And of course, they're in the agro processing sector, like, you know, uh, fish, king prawns and all that. But they want more recognition. They want more incentive. So one thing is you must utilize this um, forum, your forum, to, to voice the demands of the British Bangladeshi diaspora or the diaspora when, it, when they want to invest in Bangladesh. For example, they have two, three requests right now. Number one is that they want to majorly invest into agro sector and then re-export it to the UK. And uh, if you know that this is the first Bangladeshi mango came to UK last year in 2020s, the Amropali mango. And you know, how did it come? There's a FAO good agricultural, uh, uh, good agricultural practices, GAP. And if you follow GAP, it's a sustainable. So uh, then the FAO or the U USA supports you or UK supports you. What I'm saying is that we must listen to the diaspora. We must listen to what are their demands. They want 10% cash incentive or export duty, uh, you know, uh, break. They want 50-50 uh, you know, uh, co-financing in their projects because they want PPP, they want the land. We must listen to their trade and investment, you know, uh, facilitation demands. And number two is when it comes to future branding, I am going to, I have in throughout 2021 and I will continue to do that because that's going to be the future branding is the climate and the green branding. So I'm talking about, uh, we're majorly promoting the Muji Climate Prosperity uh, plan and under the climate prosperity, what any investment that goes into Bangladesh should be green investment uh, and green financing from the UK. Uh, there also, again, uh, you know, this is going to be the future of branding for Bangladesh. And already through Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina and the chairmanship of Climate Vulnerable Forum, we've achieved that leadership. At the COP26, Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina was one of the five most influential deal makers as the voice, moral voice for the most vulnerable. So again, I want to come back green branding is extremely important. And for that, we must engage with uh, mainstream think tanks in the UK, like Chatham House. Chatham House has really majorly promoted Bangladesh's climate story and the championship of Bangladesh in natural disaster preparedness, as well as adaptation. Uh, as you know that we also have some institutions back in Bangladesh called Global Center for Adaptation. We must brand ourselves and engage with such institution, engage them, connectivity between think tanks, and then connectivity between universities. Uh, you can't be having innovation as you know, Bangladesh's innovation ranking is very low in the global innovation uh, listing. We are actually, uh, I don't want to mention the, but you know, it, it's not very, it's not that we're in the top innovation. So in innovation, what we lack is research and development. And as you know, UK's forte is its English education and the universities where we have large number of Bangladeshis doing PhD uh, and higher education. Uh, like somebody already, I think Shamim already mentioned that, you know, we must find out what kind of R&D they're doing in this country so it's called cross-border educational cooperation, where we find out research and development and innovation. And last is, you know, uh, we will continue to, uh, culture branding is extremely important, we'll continue that in the future. But also we must, uh, if you look at Tech Nation, you know, uh, um, already um, Gaussby has mentioned digital. Uh, we also are a digital, we were the first digital uh, economy in South Asia. So Prime Minister Shikhasin in 2008 in electoral 
you know, uh, uh, manifesto declared digital Bangladesh. At that time, there was no digital economic concept in South Asia. So therefore, we have entered this uh, race quite early and we must have a branding as tech and innovation nation. And uh, with UK also, uh, signing MOUs are very important. We have already proposed to the UK a digital and innovation uh, d- digital technology and innovation cooperation MOU with ICT. And here at the Bangladesh High Commission, we have opened the first IT virtual, it's called the Bangladesh UK IT Connectivity Virtual Desk. And there is a, a, um, a dedicated virtual person, I mean, a person who's actually answering connecting private sectors of the two countries in terms of, uh, you know, somebody wants outsourcing, we connect them to the outsource, uh, whoever can do outsourcing from Bangladesh. So, um, Tech branding is extremely important and we'll continue to do that. And uh, like I said, recognition is very important and we should continue that. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, same question. Um, uh, I'll go to Ambassador Rosalism. Um, how can, as a platform, you have already mentioned few, but if you want to just add few in terms of how as a platform we can help in the journey of branding Bangladesh globally. We, uh, yeah, be, uh, thank you. Uh, I'll be very precise. Uh, I emphasized on uh, networking, using the platform, connecting, and also uh, joining together in uh, R&D and uh, research and production and commercialization. So all these are uh, possible. I mean, if we talk about uh, uh, Iran, uh, I have uh, met uh, almost uh, most of the heads of these organizations, nanotechnology organization, and uh, the medical equipment and uh, medical health sciences uh, uh, related innovation uh, uh, platform. I have met uh, the head there and also I have met uh, the head of the Institute of Cognitive uh, Science uh, Studies and also uh, those uh, uh, knowledge-based uh, uh, product uh, department, all these. and. Uh, also some uh, premier universities of this country and they are uh, very much willing and agreeable to uh, cooperate and even uh, provide uh, courses uh, at a low cost basis and also even in tailor-made uh, manner so that uh, our students uh, they can uh, do research and uh, they can even partner in r d and uh, particularly i i am talking about stem cell in stem cell they are number two in the world and uh, they they are uh, uh, providing PhD uh, opportunities uh, uh, to our students, and uh, they can they can uh, take uh, they can collaborate with them, and they can also develop uh, this uh, kind of uh, platform in Bangladesh uh, department. So, in all these areas, cooperation with them is possible, and also the uh, chambers, uh, the chamber heads are meeting out of uh, uh, 37, 31 uh, provinces. I had uh, uh, contact and uh, meeting with uh, about uh, nearly a dozen, uh, nearly 10. So uh, they are also ready to do collaborate and uh, uh, do joint venture, both here and also in Bangladesh. Uh, So uh, all these are possible and uh, your platform can really uh, uh, can work as 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 a facilitator and also uh, as a connecting uh, means. So this is possible. Yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, I think I think definitely we'll be very interested to pursuing this. And basically because we have uh, academic institute, we have got big corporations who are now exploring the next level of opportunities, both from innovation technology and future opportunities, both in Bangladesh and globally. So would, would definitely be in touch with you. Uh, I'll, I'll go to Ambassador uh, uh, Mosi, if you want to add uh, uh, on the same lens, uh, how can, as a platform, we can actually uh, uh, sort of assist in the, um, uh, you have already mentioned some, uh, in, 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 in the engagement of high commissions uh, across the world uh, to promote Bangladesh and engage in the innovation uh, and knowledge creation for Bangladesh. How can we help in that journey? Thank you once again. Actually, you see, uh, I was in Saudi Arabia uh, for five and a half years. So I will try to focus a little bit about Saudi Arabia from my experience, because uh, my esteemed colleagues, they have already mentioned about uh, from their experience. Bangladeshi, uh, we have 2.2 million Bangladeshi in Saudi Arabia. Officially, they send remittance of three and a half billion per year, but unofficially, as per the central bank, it is seven billion plus. 
and most of these workers are unskilled or semi-skilled. And for the last five years, I was putting emphasis that we should go for skill development, training, and certification. If we like what our neighboring countries like, even like Nepal, they are also putting their emphasis on this skill development and certification. So, you know, but we are still lacking this skill development and certification and, you know, upskill these workers. Because if we could skill, upskill and skill, because, you know, Bangladesh in Middle East, they are known as the very good workers, dedicated workers, hardworking workers, and most important, intelligent workers. But what they lack is, you know, some training that is so. But, you know, our expert ministry, they have 42 training centers. But, you know, the training, what they impart, you know, this is, it is not what actually is required in the Middle East context, you know. So if you can take it up with the ministry and the training centers to, you know, send the skilled workers immediately our, that gentleman, if you, you can upskill a person, you are giving a, a, a guaranteed life to a person. Because, you know, unskilled worker, if you send a unskilled worker, he works there for 30 years and he comes back, he comes back as the same unskilled. But if you can skill, you know, or certif give a certification, internal certification, you are giving a new lease of life to that person. And that will, you know, immediately we can expect a three or four times more uh, remittance from these workers. So I think from so Middle East context, I think certification training is most important to impart and expect ministry uh, should be more, uh, uh, you know, play a role. And I think your uh, through your uh, platform also, you can also encourage because, uh, you know, we have to be very careful. We are now looking forward. We are going to have fourth industrial revolution where, you know, no need of this unskilled or semi-skilled. So this is very important. And I think that is what you sh we should focus. And when you say, say innovation, I think uh, what uh, our uh, Ambassador, Mr. Sharkar, or Ambassador Muna has mentioned, actually, you see the diaspora is already there. They are already people. What you need is a, a counterpart and connectivity because, uh, you know, uh, and recognition. And, you know, for example, you know, our workers, we have 2.2 million workers in Saudi Arabia. For last five years, I am trying to help them with simple and insurance coverage. And for the last five years still, you know, we are uh, still, it has not been implemented. And, you know, so this diaspora, they need a little bit of support. And, you know, uh, it's not a very difficult thing. What we get from this diaspora, you know, in return, they also need a little bit of support from the government or the private sector. And they should be treated as a, you know, that they're doing a big favor to our national economy. So I think that is what sort of, uh, that is recognition. Uh, this is very important. Once again, I thank Ambassador Muna for raising and mentioning this. This is very important. The diaspora just need the recognition. That's all. Thank you very much. Um, uh, thank you so much. Uh, I've already taken three to four points. I think uh, uh, all of these are very, very important and we'd love to sort of see how we can assist in those three, four points that you've highlighted. Thank you so much, Ambassador Mosse. Uh, finally, to Ambassador Shamim, um, uh, how can we help in your journey? Uh, same question. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, uh, as I did mention at the beginning, uh, our branding drive, our country branding drive should be uh, a, a well-coordinated approach. We should in, include uh, all stakeholders, uh, government and private sectors. And I think this is uh, in that spirit, I think this platform can uh, play a very, very effective role and it can be an effective conduit and it can effectively supplement our effort. So I'll be more than happy to be part of that and I'll, I'll be happy to, uh, we welcome uh, your readiness to uh, support our uh, activities and programs. Thank you. 
Thank you so much. It's been, uh, uh, this is such a passionate topic for me personally, and I know that for all of, all of you, I think I can continue throughout the, for another couple of hours happily, but I know that it would be, it would be a little uh, too stretching, but would love to sort of engage with all of you beyond this, beyond the official meeting. Um, as I mentioned, there are uh, at least number of, um, uh, quite a number of points I have taken from all of you, which I'll personally be contacting you to see that how we can sort of work on each of those issues. And as it moves along, we would like to see that how can we uh, collectively create an impact that all of you are mentioning that it requires collaboration, not just with one party, collectively. Uh, the next phase of journey is going to be extremely different, uh, very, very difficult. At the same time, huge opportunity. We know that all of us, that uh, it's there in front of us. And uh, uh, collectively, if we uh, come together, I'm sure the next uh, we, can, we can shape uh, uh, the, uh, the building block for the next 50 years. Um, yeah, so with that vision and looking forward to uh, making Bangladesh a developed nation uh, by becoming an innovative country in 2041, um, uh, but with that vision and dream, um, I end. Thank you so much, Excellencies, uh, for joining today and giving your valuable insights. Uh, and I'm sure uh, these insights would help us to shape the platform better so that we can make a difference for Bangladesh and for all of us. Uh, once again, um, uh, 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 greetings from Bangladesh on the celebration of the 50 years. Um, all of you, uh, I hope that you stay well uh, in the coming uh, coming days and take care of yourself. Asalaamu As Alaikum. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for inviting us. Mr. Thank Sharif. you for inviting us, uh, Sharif. We really enjoyed it. And I enjoyed meeting all my colleagues. <laughs>